Okay, I got called in uh, to this customer's house that we've had for a bunch of years with um, just a concern about their weeping Japanese maple, which you see over here. Um, to most eyes, it would seem fine, and it looks pretty good. But because they live here and they've noticed a change over the last year or two, it looks a lot thinner to them, and so they're concerned about it. Um, we do a little bit of fertilizing on the property, not a whole lot. And um, so the first thing we'll look at with a situation like this is we look for insects, signs of insects, diseases, signs of disease. Um, on this tree, I, I know that they hardly get any insects. It's rare that they do. Usually look underneath the leaves. Sometimes we'll look on the stems of the, uh, of the plants to see scale insects or any sort of wood boring insects. Um, again, very uncommon for a Japanese maple. Um, what is common for Japanese maples is, or any maples, is a disease called verticillium wilt, which is a soil borne disease and will often kill back a section of the tree at a time. So it's sort of spotty. This doesn't show any dieback um, of sections. It has a handful of dead twigs in it that is sort of normal, a little thinning, but it is a little thin. Um, the next thing I often check with maples um, is very common for them to get a girdling root, it's called. Now, I'm going to try and keep this brief because I don't know how to do that, but I shall try. So you'll see what I already did here, just so I didn't have to bore everybody, even though this is not quite boring. This is a, the soil on this plant was right up to here. So when I see a tree that looks like it goes straight into the ground like this, it doesn't curve out like a typical tree might. Um, it tells me either that the tree was perhaps um, planted too deep when it was initially put in and it's buried, which is really common, and we'll talk about that in, in another uh, segment. Or there's the chance that, especially with maples, there's uh, when they are planted too deep, or even for other reasons, they'll begin to get a root that will spiral around it. And it will spiral around it to the point where it grows around the trunk, it gets thick, and it will actually choke the tree and kill off parts, or all the tree, or severely stunt it. Um, so that was suspicious of this because if you get down here, you can see it just goes straight into the ground. And it doesn't look like there's much of a root flare. I've already pulled away all the soil here. Um, this is a little abnormal for the average tree, but a weeping Japanese maple is a grafted tree, so this was grafted a long time ago. Um, I was looking for a girdling root here, which I thought I was beginning to see until I exposed it more and I saw that basically this is just the, the original graft, which is sort of exaggerated the way that it's grown, maybe because it had that terrible experience at young age with the oil period like people have experiences at young ages and it affects them later in life right so this is kind of cool um it does look like the possible girdling root that may have you know grown into itself over here um so i would say this tree does not have a girdling root it was planted a little bit too deep or replanted during its struggle time and um Although a, uh, it's grown for all these years, um, and it was, you know, it's, it's um, apparently strong and healthy, um, when a situation like this, where this much soil is added to the base of a tree, and um, a lot of energy is expended for the tree, from the tree, to get oxygen, and exchange oxygen, and water, and carbon dioxide, and all that, it's, it, it, it takes a lot of energy for a tree to do that. It'll do it, it'll fight hard when it's young. The older it gets, it gets tired. And so even though it could do all that work and look beautiful for a lot of years, um, this excess soil has probably stressed the tree out a lot. So um, not a lot we can do to go backwards, but I'm gonna encourage the customer to remove this excess soil a little bit carefully without breaking any of these you know, fibrous roots here and take it away from the plant. Um, and then also we'll put down some, I uh, recommend putting down some natural uh, composted wood chips. And then we'll do some deep root fertilization with compost tea. Again, we'll talk about that at another time. Um, and that's about it for this, for this tree here. Um, and then hopefully we can follow up next year and see if there's some changes for the tree. That's it. Notes from the field for today. 
Have a great day.